Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Today we're talking about the U.S. office market. You know, and a lot of times we're talking about these core markets around the gateway cities. We're talking about the institutional quality office buildings and other types of real estate. But, you know, a lot of our listeners and viewers around the country are in the secondary markets and tertiary markets. And certainly there's a lot of opportunity there. And so let's talk about that. Please welcome my next guest. It's James Cook. He's National Director of Analytics with Excelligent. James, thanks for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, you guys do a, a good job there of covering, uh, you know, a lot of the, the markets around the country. You guys have been growing, so I understand you guys are, are now about to splash in Orlando and in Houston, right? That's correct. We're yeah. moving quickly uh, to get into new markets. Well, that's great. Well, let's talk about some of these secondary markets. Uh, you know, how much interest? is there for investors in some of these secondary and tertiary markets? It, it seems to be increasing, isn't it? I would say so. Yeah, I'm, investors um, and the brokers that represent them are really interested, I think, in what's going on beyond the core markets. Um, they've seen low yields um, from treasuries for some time, which has put, pushed both domestic and global investors to invest in core U.S. office markets but that's driven down cap rates. So now some investors um, are either doing it or considering doing it, chasing yield in those non-core markets. And uh, we saw such a, an amount of interest in this topic that last month we put together a panel at uh, NAOP has an, it's called OCON, it's an office conference. We did a panel we called a Journey to the Center of America um, where we talked about secondary and tertiary office markets because for a lot of people it is something of a journey um, these secondary and uh, tertiary office markets are something that's sort of outside of their comfort zone right and so give us some uh, sample uh, examples of the cap rates that these investors are having to pay in these gateway markets and then the increased return they can see in some secondary markets yeah, well, and it's interesting, too. I mean, what I tried to do, you know, I'm the research guy, so I want to look at the numbers. And I'm interested in testing um, some of what our assumptions are about um, the secondary markets. And one of our assumptions is that um, secondary markets always have lower cap rates. Um, absolutely the case. That's one of the assumptions that turned out to be true. So, you know, Manhattan office, you know, New York is always going to be the leader in investment global demand uh, in the U.S. So average cap rates in, for Manhattan, 4.5%, um, Chicago, 5.7%. But then you compare that um, with some secondary markets um, like Cleveland or Minneapolis, both at 7.8%. But what I think is most interesting is that some of these secondary markets demand is such that cap rates <clears throat> are really starting to narrow the gap between primary and secondary. So you've got Nashville um, with cap rates now down to 6.4%, which isn't than Los Angeles, which has average cap rates of 6%. Right, so that gap's closing a little bit as these investors are, are chasing yield, right? And let's talk about how these properties perform because I think the investors always have more of a comfort level with these gateway markets because they feel like they're going to have great occupancy, great demand, great rental growth. Uh, so so what do you see as, as the secondary markets? Is there a lot more vacancy in these markets? Well, so our assumption obviously vacancy rates are going to be higher in secondary markets and it turns out um, vacancy rates are not always higher in secondary markets. So you've got your hot non-core markets, um, for example, Nashville, Portland, and Minneapolis, with lower vacancy rates than some core markets. So for example, Chicago's vacancy rate is at 15.6%, Los Angeles is at 14.5%. Meanwhile, Nashville's all the way down to 8.6%. Portland is at 8.7%. Now, What's great about, um, you know, for example, uh, Nashville right now is that uh, Class A, for example, vacancy rates are so low, it's at 3%, um, that it's spurring on new construction. Nashville's got 2 million square feet of new construction going on right now. Most of that 
by the health healthcare industry, which is huge in, in Nashville. Okay. And what about uh, rental rates? Uh, are, are you, what are you seeing for rental rates in these secondary and tertiary markets? And how do they compare to the gateway cities? That seems to be another assumption that we held that is indeed holding up to scrutiny. Rents are higher in primary markets. Um, just demand drives up rents. You've got Manhattan again, which is a crazy outlier, um, you know, where rents are over $67 a square foot off office uh, asking rents. And compare that with, say, Cleveland, which is uh, $17.65 per square foot. So there's a huge swing there. Um, and you're talking about a, a, B, and C here, right? Yeah, this is yeah. average asking rents right, okay. overall for office. Mm -hmm. um, for competitive A, B, and C space. Um, Nashville, again, is that one that's sort of closing the gap, although not so much. I mean, rents in Nashville are still uh, $22.60 a foot. is still $10 cheaper than you're seeing in Los Angeles. But that's less of a gap than we've seen in the past. So as you're crunching these numbers and you guys have looked at these markets, what else jumps out to you in the numbers for these secondary type markets? Well, I thought, I mean, when I started looking at this topic, I thought, well, you know, you know what, if I live in a primary market, I'm going to assume that I'm making more money than somebody in a secondary market. So I wanted to test that and I want to look at the average of wages. And so we just, we chose some markets and looked at some BLS average wage data. And of course, if you live in New York, uh, you're going to be making more money. So um, New York's mean wage is uh, $61,640. But... Um, again, there are some markets where that doesn't pan out. If you live in Portland, Oregon, uh, where you're making over $50,000 a year on average, Minneapolis, over $50, $52,000 a year, that's actually higher than what the average is in Chicago of about $51,000. Um, in fact, Minneapolis is nearly as high as LA, which mean wages are at $53,000. Markets like Portland, for example, Austin is another one. They're just such a draw um, for millennials and, and young workers that they're really driving up that, that demand, um, and we're seeing higher wages because of it. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll close with the million-dollar question for you. Uh, which secondary and tertiary markets, if you're investing in the office market, should you consider right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I would say, as far as looking at cap rates are concerned, the smart money seems to be going to places like Portland, uh, Nashville, um, Cleveland to a certain extent. Um, I would bet my money on Portland. There seems to be a huge amount of demand in Portland. For example, uh, Scott Madsen, who's a broker in Portland, um, has just, uh, you know, who was on our panel uh, that we did not was mentioning that Airbnb had been looking for space. You know, they had thousands of workers they wanted to locate in downtown Portland. They could secure the space. They didn't even have parking requirements. So they expected their employees to bike or take public transit. Um, they still couldn't find the space. That's how high in demand Portland is right now. Yeah, those, those are good points. I think, you know, when you look at these secondary and tertiary markets that have good employment, you know, they have a robust economy, they could be some great places to invest. And James, we appreciate you investing some time with us for our listeners today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. And if you'd like more from Excelligent, visit their website. It's X-C-E-L-I-G-E-N-T dot com. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back with more on the U.S. office market. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit excelligent.com. That's X C E L I G E N T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit commercialsearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.